Hello everyone! Today I'm going to use this video to guide you through generating meshes by qubit, uploading files to the teaching server, running analysis, downloading the results, and post-processing using Paraview. First, let's learn about how to generate meshes by using Cofum qubit. Be sure that you are using the latest available version of qubit. When we generate a mesh in qubit, the best thing to do is to use a journal file from here. And because the journal file can help you to keep a record of the command we use in the GUI. We start the journal file always with reset. This can ensure every time when we run the journal file, the model resets and we can start with a clean slate. The next line should be typed in set duplicate block elements on set du duplicate block elements on and this allow us to create uh, multiple blocks on the same geometric entities then we run these two lines and we can start creating the geometry by clicking this geometry volume create and in this case, we want to create a brick. So we choose brick and put one on the width, one on the height, and five on the depth. Apply. Now we can see this beam is created. And please um, remember to copy these lines, this comment line, into the journal file. Then we need to create another brick with a slightly smaller dimension, 0.5 on the width and 0.5 on the height, and apply. Now we can see these two bricks are created. The second one is inside the first one. And please remember to copy this comment line into the journal file because we can reuse these uh, comment lines later. And also we can always uh, run this journal file and to make sure that every step we made is correct. Now, we want to subtract the second volume from the first by selecting this button here, boolean, and choose subtract. And we want to subtract the second one from the first one. So we apply. Now we can see this hollow beam is created. And still remember to copy this line into the journal file and play it. For the next step, we need to define the material properties to the blocks by selecting this, choose block, choose create. And we need to create a block here by choosing the volume, this whole volume. And we give the name to the block as mat elastic and we need to choose this allow blocks to contain duplicate elements and apply then we can see this block is created here and we need to set two attributes to this block the first one would be the Young's modulus which would be 1000 and the second one would be the Poisson's ratio which which is 0 0.4 and still remember to um, create uh, to copy these lines to the journal file. Block one name mat elastic, and block one attribute count two. Block one attribute index one one thousand, and this one. And we can change the name of the attribute. The first one would be. Young's modulus and be careful we don't use any symbol here so that's why I'm just typing Young's modulus without the quote and the second one would be the Poisson ratio and we run this again and to make sure everything is working fine also um, these names, attribute names, is not required for the simulation. 
as the first parameter will always be considered as the Young's modulars, and the second would be also always considered as Poisson's ratio. But the name can help you to remember the meaning of these attributes. So it really depends on you. If you want to set the name, then you can set. If you don't, then it doesn't matter. Next, we need to create the boundary conditions by create also by creating the blocks. Um, maybe we want to start with fixing the displacement on one side of this beam by selecting this surface, maybe surface 18, and give the name as fix all. Also remember to uh, choose this. And we can see this block is created here. And because uh, you will fix the displacement in all directions to the same value. So you just need to give one attribute and set this attribute to be zero. Still remember to copy these lines to the journal file. I forgot this line, it should be here. And for this, we just remove the name, it's okay. And we play it again and see this block is created fine here on this surface. Then we need to apply a force to another block, should be on the surface opposite to the, uh, where we fix the displacement by selecting uh, this surface and we can see the number of this surface is 17 then we can just copy these lines we can reuse this comment for creating blocks here and change the block number to be the 3 because the 1 and 2 would have already been used and use 17 and give the name as uh, force and we need 3 attributes to the force because we have three force um, component. And because we want to set one to the Y component. So we give one here and we name this force component. The first one should be maybe X component. And the second and third, you can copy, paste here x y z here and we play and now we can see this force is created on this surface with three different force components and the y component would be one now we can start generating mesh uh, we select this mesh here choose volume choose mesh because we want to create a TED mesh here, so we just choose TED mesh and we choose this volume or we can just use volume all, it would be more convenient and apply scheme, choose the intervals and choose the size of the mesh, also mesh volume all and because in this case we just need a cost mesh so we just put it here and apply size and mesh it. Now we can see this mesh is created and still remember to copy these lines to the journal file. This volume more and this one mesh volume more and run this again and to see if the mesh is created successfully. Finally we need to save this cube file by choosing here and save as and choose the path you want to save it uh, maybe here I'll put it in the basic finance elements and give the name maybe here I'll give it the name as uh, hollow cantilever and be careful you need to choose the .cube file 
Don't use .cube file. This is very important. Choose .cube file and save it. Also, um, copy this line to the journal file. And run this journal file again to see if um, everything is working fine with the journal file. And then we need to save this journal file. Also in the, I will save it in the same path with the same name. And the journal file is saved with extension .jou. Save it. Now, let's upload the mesh to the teaching server and run the analysis. First, go to your web browser and open the link to the teaching server. Remember, if you are not using the university computers, you need to switch on the VPN. We need to log in by using the account name you have, and the password will be set at the first time you log in. And be careful, the username is not case sensitive, so no matter I use all capital or just this is okay, but the password is case sensitive. So be careful to check if your caps lock is on when you are entering the password for the first time. We sign in now. And now we can see your account. The first time you log into your account, open the install file. It's also an Jupyter notebook, and the Jupyter notebook contains the Python code cells that you can execute by pressing the run button here, or by using shortcuts Shift and enter. Ignore these warnings. Okay, the installation is done now. So we go back to the home page, home folder, and then go to the elasticity folder to run the analysis. We need to upload the .cube file you created in Qubit to this folder by using this upload here. We choose be careful to choose the .cube file, not .jou, and open it, upload. Now we can open this elasticity notebook, which contains the Python code to run the simulation. This notebook starts with um, two cells, which imports required the modules here, and defined the utility functions for the analysis. We can start by executing these two cells, Later on, you can also execute all the styles in the notebook by pressing this button or choose the kernel, restart and run all. For the analysis, you would need to change a few of um, parameters here. We can start by uh, changing the name of the file. We need to use exactly the same name as you uploaded. We copy and paste it here and run this cell. Then you can see this mesh you created in the qubit file. And also you can do rotating and zooming and zoom out here. Next, we need to set a couple of parameters for the simulation. This is for the order of approxim approximation. And this is for the number of the processors you use. The order of the approximation controls the uh, accuracy of the simulation, while the number of the processors controls the speed of the analysis. Once you finish all the steps in this tutorial, you can come back here to this cell and try to run the analysis with different parameters. For now, we just run this cell and start the analysis. Once the analysis is complete, you can visualize the results. In these cells, you can show two different fields. For example, displacement and stress next to each other. In the cell on the left, choose U for displacement. And also, you can specify the uh, component, x, uh, 0 for the x and 1 for the y, 2 for the z. You can also choose whether to show the edges or not and also set the warping vector for the deformation. Then we can run this cell to see the result. 
and repeat the process in the cell on the right. We can choose um, stress here. And remember, stress is a tensor. So here we have more components. Uh, zero is for xx, one is for xy, or maybe five is for yz, and eight is for zz here. And also choose to show the edges or not, and the warping vector, and show the result. Also, you can rotate and zoom in, zoom out for the result here. Now, let's download the results for more detailed post-processing in the PowerView. We go back to the folder, and the analysis generated an output file here, altelastic.vtk here, in the same folder where you uploaded the mesh, and we need to download this file by clicking this um, download and keep it. And we open it in the pair view for, for analysis. In the pair view, we need to open the um, file we downloaded, this one, outelastic.vtk. And we can see the result is showing here. We can show the string. Uh, the stress or the displacement here and also we can choose to show the edges and if you choose warping by vector here and select these vectors to be displacement and you can see the the structure has some deformation here changing by the scale factor. If the results are not as smooth as you want, you can just go back to the qubit. And by changing the uh, uh, mesh size factor to be a smaller value and to get a refined mesh. And you also need to upload this new qubit file to your teaching server by upload this docube file, upload and overwrite it. And then run the whole script again. And alternatively, you can also choose a, a higher approximation order to give a, a better result. You can just choose this restart and run all. And you will see this refined mesh is uploaded and get a better result.